Can you believe, not that E3 is almost here again, but that's been a year since the last one already? I just can't get over that. <laughs> Anyways, I guess that means it's now time for us to give our predictions for the upcoming E3, especially because I've been seeing tons of tweets and message boards, posts, and everything asking where our predictions are. So here we are, we're finally gonna, do, we're finally gonna give them. And this time, you know, I, we usually hold off uh, until pretty much the last minute to do these, and I'm glad we did in this case, because Nintendo actually sent out an email just yesterday confirming some of the games are, are gonna be playable there, which makes our job even easier. So thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> so they confirmed uh, specifically that Luigi's Mansion 3, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Link's Awakening, and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 will all be playable in some form, and I believe they also said there'll be more in addition to that as well, presumably unannounced titles, hopefully. So I guess before we get into it, uh, let's start off with our overall expectations for this year, um, especially now that we know a little bit going into it. Uh, now, there was a rumor going around that the Direct will be about 45 minutes, which, no duh, of course it's going to be around that. It's always <laughs> around 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, however, I do want to point out one thing, and that's the fact that last year, over half of it was dedicated to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And I have a feeling that probably won't be the case this year. <laughs> so, they have to fill that time with something. So, guys, what are your overall expectations without getting too into the specifics on this? Derek, let's start off with you. What are, your, uh, what are you kind of hoping for here? This feels like it's going to be a much more low-key year for Nintendo. It just feels like a more low-key year in in general for the game industry, especially with Sony not being there. And it seems like Microsoft is the only one going really hard on this. Maybe Square Enix, if uh, you know the expectations about Final Fantasy VII Remake being there are, are uh, true. But overall, it just feels like... Nintendo has shown a lot of different games that have just not released yet, so I feel like they're going to be focusing most of their time on those games rather than showing anything new or crazy. I, I think their big reveal is really going to be Animal Crossing, showing off their gameplay, giving expectations for what uh, fans can expect from that. But overall, nothing huge. Yeah, I completely agree. I think what Nintendo has to prove here this year is that they, you know, there have been some people complaining that their software output during year three has been a little not so great so far in the first half of the year. So I think that really what they have to prove here is what they're going to be releasing for the Switch in the second half of 2019, as well as Derek said, blowing out Animal Crossing, which I don't necessarily expect to release this year. Hopefully it does. But either way, I do think they need to blow the lid off of Animal Crossing while simultaneously, you know, assuaging consumers' fears that Nintendo's, you know, software output has kind of slowed down a little bit for the Switch's third year. So I think they've really got to focus on that second half of the year and show us, hey, what exactly is coming? What can we expect? What do we have to look forward to? Ash, you just crushed so many hearts saying <laughs> Animal Crossing isn't coming this year. I, I didn't say it isn't. I just kind of feel like it might not be. I don't know They're why. They're going to freak. I know, freak, I know. Ash. I'm sorry. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> But there's a lot of unknown entities at the moment, right? Like, Luigi's Mansion 3 was um, revealed, we haven't really seen much of it since then. Astral Chain was revealed, Link's Awakening was revealed. Neither of those games we really know that much about at this point. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of room to just elaborate on those. Like, we know Link's Awakening is a remake, but they kind of call it a reimagining in their E3 description thing. So I'm thinking there's probably going to be quite a few more like, new elements in Link's Awakening that we have to learn about first. Um, but of course, there's a bunch of titles that could be at this show, which could be brand new reveals. They don't have to launch this year, that's the thing as well. I think they said they're focusing on 2019, but they always say that. Like, they always say they're <laughs> going to focus on, on the current year, so there might be some big surprises for future titles too. So all in all, I'm, I, I'm trying to keep my expectations fairly low, but I want some big surprises in there. Yeah, I think Nintendo basically has the makeup of the first half of the, the first half of the year. Now they have to show us why we should be excited, because there hasn't been a whole lot to get the maybe typical Nintendo gamer uh, interested in their lineup so far. There's been a lot of great third-party support. Um, there's been some interesting, uh, unusual titles even from Nintendo, such as Labo VR, something I enjoyed, uh, and I've also been really digging the uh, VR support in Zelda. But I realize there's a pretty niche audience for reaching there. It seems. So, yeah, they kind of need to show why the Switch is a platform to be excited for moving forward. And that's going to entail both you know, first-party and third-party games. Um, so I guess now that we got our base expectations out of the way, let's go ahead and start diving into our overall expectations, or our overall predictions, rather. And actually, real quick, there's one other thing I want to touch on. Because we all kinda, we've already kind of mentioned Animal Crossing to some degree. But I've seen a lot of people freaking out about the fact that Animal Crossing isn't going to be playable. Or rather, wasn't said to be playable at E3. What do you think that means? Do you think Nintendo's just playing coy? Do you think it won't be play? Do you think it, in fact, won't be playable? Or, or do you think there's a chance it won't appear at all at this year's E3? Well, here's the thing. In, in, their, in their notice, they say that it's going to be Link's Awakening. They say um, Pokemon and all those other titles. And then they say, and even more. 
People see that and even more part, and they say, whoa, whoa, Animal Crossing is not going to be there? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a big possibility it will be there, because and more means more. It doesn't mean it's not going to be there at all. So um, my expectation is it could be there, but at the same time, Animal Crossing isn't the kind of game that demos that well. I remember, I think it was E3 2010 or something, um, when they showed uh, City Folk for the Wii. Um, they they, de they dedicated a qu quite a big chunk of their conference to City Folk, and um, it didn't demo that well. It's, it's very hard to show off an Animal Crossing game in that short a time. So if they do show Animal Crossing, I kind of expect it to be a treehouse thing, rather than an on uh, rather than an on floor demo. That was also the We Speak year, I believe, 2010. Right. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> Um, I completely agree. I, I think it'll be in the direct. I think it's going to get a nice little segment to itself where we kind of learn the, na the game's name, the subtitle, what the big twist is for this new Animal Crossing. But I agree with John. Animal Crossing doesn't demo well. I don't think it's going to be the kind of thing where we walk into their show floor and the whole booth is Animal Crossing themed. I don't think they're going to go that route with Animal Crossing. But I do think it's going to get its nice little, you know, chunk of time to be revealed and kind of overviewed in the direct and, and possibly on Treehouse Live as well. Yeah, the only way Animal Crossing is getting any kind of demo at E3 is if it has some new major gameplay element that does work for the short bursts, and that just seems anti-Animal Crossing to me, so right. I can't really see that being a thing. Um, there's no doubt in my mind it's going to be there, it's going to be shown. Pe Nintendo has to know people are dying for this thing, um, but... It, as John said, it just does not demo well. What do you do? Go around, shake trees, talk to people, collect a few bells? Okay, you're done. I am not going to sit here and hear this talk about Animal Crossing <laughs> not demoing well. When Animal Crossing Sweet Day <laughs> was one of the best demos for the Wii U at E3 2012. Anyways, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I don't think it's going to be playable. Uh, I do think it will be shown both in the direct as well as, I think, as you guys said, in depth on the treehouse. That is like a perfect treehouse game. They can sit there casually just shoot the uh, shoot the crap for you know 20 minutes as they're showing off random stuff in the village. They can do whatever they want and people will eat that up. Um, so I guess let me go ahead and open up then with my overall predictions for Animal Crossing. Uh, and he here's what I'm picturing. I think they will show us the opening sequence to the game, or at least segments of it. And the way it's going to open now this time, guys, is you're going to arrive by seaplane. And that's because this is Animal Crossing Open Waters, and you're landing oh, on man. an island. Every town is its own island. You have a full 360 degree camera in which you can explore the environment. You can go to every beach that's around. You can go, you know, follow the beach around your island if you want. You can look off the distance at other islands, which of course are your friends' islands, which you can take a boat to get to. If you want to visit people's <laughs> islands who aren't your friends, then you take the seaplane again. Um, because in this game, a, con you know, connecting other people, going to other people's uh, islands is going to be or towns island towns is going to be a huge focus I think um, and you will be able to visit people's towns even when they're offline for the first time without having to upload it to like some weird dream version or something um, and in this case you'll be able to set permissions for your town that dictates what people can do for both your friends and strangers in your town when you're not there whether it's nothing at all uh, or whether it's you know chopping down trees or giving you gifts if you want you can set the exact uh, parameters for what people can do when you're not around so, uh, and um, my prediction is that it will it will be shown pretty in depth, as I said already on Treehouse. Uh, but I am predicting it will be next year, early next year. Ooh, do we do we all think that? Because Ash said the same thing earlier, and um, yeah. I mean, on a technicality, it could still be in the fiscal year 2019. Because in the um, investors meeting, they said that the winter is going to be Pokemon and uh, whatever else. But then just 2019 was Animal Crossing. And that technically would be um, 2020 March, right? So it, it could very well miss this year and still technically hit 2019. <laughs> yeah, part of the reason why I think this is there's a lot they have to kind of cram in here into the end of the year. And I feel like if there were a game that's more likely, that's most likely to be pushed, it would be that one. I mean, Animal Crossing also seems to be the type of game that would thrive in a at a point in time when there's not a lot going on like this doesn't seem right. this doesn't scream like big November release to me even though it has a ton of fans but it's not something to get people that excited if you're not into Animal Crossing I don't know if this is going to draw in new new fans or not uh, you know New Leaf did but who knows it just seems like it's a better fit for a low key time especially when as we've said Nintendo has a lot to release mm -hmm. yeah I agree yeah, here's the thing too as well, is they've already stated there won't be any new hardware revisions at E3, and I think that's kind of a necessity for Animal Crossing, because that's you expanding your audience to families, and if there, if there isn't like cheaper hardware out there for Animal Crossing already there, that's, that's kind of missing your opportunity. 
So, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it is like early 2020 or even like spring 2020. To coincide with a new hardware release, you're saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I do think it'll be within fiscal 2019. I see it release. I don't think we'll have to wait that long past like, you know, the end of the year. I'm thinking maybe the first three months of the year ish. So I do think it'll be out before the end of fiscal 2019. As for Andre's ideas, I like them. It'd be co- kind of cool if there was a mainland you can go to as to, to mingle as well. But boy, that seems ambitious. <laughs> yeah, I have. I, I I would love that, but I have no faith in any of that. They're gonna start justifying the online service in one way or another, right? So this is how you do it. Animal Crossing is their killer app for Nintendo Switch Online, and I, I'm betting that. Uh, Oh man, this this is actually tough to say. <laughs> I'm betting that this will actually be where they hit the home run for it. That this is going to be their killer title for for showing why you need Nintendo Switch Online. I can see them getting everything right, and then right at the end they reveal that you cannot visit your friends' towns and you can visit strangers' towns. <laughs> exactly. Animal Crossing, I... strange waters, stranger waters. Oh man, <laughs> on stranger yeah. tides. Yep. Sorry to be the downer here. I I do not have faith that they're going to knock it out of the park with this game in terms of Nintendo Switch Online. I think the game will be great. It's Animal Crossing. I think it's going to deliver. But can it be? I just I, I don't been... know if it can be if it doesn't have a strong online. I think we're at the point now. Where, like a I mean, that's point. true. Yeah, I mean. That's true. I, Nintendo continues to rock the boat in terms of what we feel we should expect. I just don't. I don't have faith. I mean, here's an exciting prospect, though. New Leaf was that 2013, so that was um, like six years ago now. Wow. M- might even be seven years. I can't. I can't remember exactly when it launched. But we're talking radically different hardware and a seven-year gap from 3DS to Switch. I think there's definitely a, a, a giant jump that they can make there. And maybe online is it. I mean, we haven't seen Nintendo quite nail it recently. But maybe this is the game that they need to nail it on, though. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel yeah. like it is. Um, although I should mention, of course, with the Switch being offline, you know, or with it being hand, in, you know, available in handheld mode as well, um, it will have to have a strong offline presence as well. But I really do think it's going to do. I really do think they're going to take the online to the next level with this one. Or I hope they better. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Which uh, someone else uh, want to step up with a prediction? I mean, All right, I've got one. All right, <laughs> go for it, John. I've got a prediction. So. Um, Star Fox Zero was a pretty good game, right? Um, it had its problems, and I think this, the biggest problem it had was it was quite derivative of past Star Fox games. So I thought, how do you fix that? And my usual answer is just put them in space, but that doesn't really like, that doesn't work with Star Fox. He's already already in space. So my second solution is not space, but rather time. So I introduce you guys to Star Fox Time Patrol. <laughs> And in this game, basically, <laughs> you, you start off in the past. You gotta Andros fix is, all those the disparate timelines from Command. <laughs> <laughs> so Andros' son put Fox and team back in time to the past, to the prehistoric era, and they have to make it back to the future. So they make their way across this solar system, each time making it further and further through time. But every single time you go through a level and change things, it affects the next level. So we're taking Star Fox's uh, open-ended progression system and taking it even further by just changing how levels can pan out in the future by affecting the past. So, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the premise of Star Fox Time Patrol. It's all about time, but we're keeping the traditional Star Fox gameplay while going through it. That, that, I, 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 let's do it. I'm all in. Yes, this is happening. Star Fox Time Patrol confirmed. Is, so, is this Retro's new title? Is this, uh, is this what they've been uh, working this on? This isn't. I have, I have another prediction for Retro's new title, but I'll hold on to it for now. Okay. But yeah, this is not Retro. All right. I guess I'll, I'll piggyback off of that since you mentioned Star Fox, and I'll say that unfortunately, as though as, as much as I would like it to be real, I don't think we're going to see Star Fox Grand Prix at because uh, of Time Patrol. This direct exactly because they, they mixed it and it's Time Patrol instead. So uh, yeah, no, you you nailed it, John. No Grand Prix, but we're getting this time traveling Star Fox game. But uh, I don't I know I don't feel as though it, it's it maybe it was real at one point, maybe it'll come out in the future. I just kind of feel like it's not a thing anymore, and I don't think we're going to see it. Uh, at E3 or in this direct. The, uh, everything we've heard about that is just the most weird thing ever. I don't know. It is, it's right? It was a roller coaster. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, really it feels as though there was some actual there there, but at this point, it doesn't feel like that anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay, John, that's, <laughs> you can come out swinging <laughs> out of the gate. I'm going to start right? off easy. It's just no, no bam, we're going to go right to the hard for it. Uh, I'm going to bring us back down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, since we de- since we do know there's going to be a Pokemon demo there, um, 
I thought I'd mention that. And I think the demo will either be Breath of the Wild inspired and in where their players can just get dropped in the middle of the wild area and explore wherever, or it's going to be way more limited and it'll be a way to get more people through by having four players join up for raid battles. And that's all, all it'll be shown. I don't think it'll start from the beginning. It's either the wild area or the raid battles for, for our demo. That I sounds agree. about right. Um, but here's a question for you though, Derek. Do you mm. think Pokemon's going to be in the Direct itself? Or is it too soon after the actual Pokemon Direct? That's a tough one. I mean, it feels like they got all the information out there. And Pokemon's not typically in Directs, in the main E3 Directs, that often. I can see it having a small segment, maybe introducing uh, Evolutions or a, another Gym Leader. It's hard to say. But it, we might get a little bit. I'm not expecting anything more than... Two minutes long, though. I want the reveal of voice acting. <laughs> oh, that, that would that be major. They have revealed the voice acting. Right. Yeah. Um, there's there's parts where like you can always see their lips moving, which I mean that does happen in Pokemon games when they speak sometimes. But maybe this is the reveal. Maybe it could happen this time. There's also not a single sign of a text box in the game in the in these trailers. So <laughs> good point. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. yeah. I, I think it'll be a very highly regulated demo. Like I keep thinking, to, uh, thinking back to the Let's Go demo of last year, where you had like 999 Pokeballs to like capture like three <laughs> Pokemon or something, or you're in Viridian Forest and you have like the easiest Pokemon to catch. So I think it will be demo, but I think it'll be one of you know the Pokemon Company's famously highly regulated, very 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 thin vertical slice of the game that doesn't really give you much context for what's going on outside of that very specific spot that you're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, we won't be able to even capture footage, I almost guarantee that. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Alright Ash, you got a prediction for us? I do, and in fact, I, I wrote a little rhyme for it. Wow. I'm gonna go all in. Real quick, uh, we'll put a timestamp on the screen if you don't want to hear about uh, a rumor we're, we're about to discuss, probably in relation to Smash Brothers, I'm guessing. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> go ahead and skip ahead to the timestamp, and that way you won't have any like rumor-based spoilers in this direct. Alright Ash, go ahead and uh, go for it. Alright, so this rhyme is inspired by one of our favorite Nintendo 64 Air villains, and it goes like this. What a rare turn of events it would be if at E3, Bear and Bird were finally set free. I think it's happening, you guys. That is something Grunty would say, right? It, it, I mean, it's, oh, it, that, yeah. had, that had more of a rhyme than any of the other Banjo games since the original Banjo game. Banjo game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I thought about that one last night, like, good, long and hard. I'm like, okay, this has to be really strong. Something Grunty would actually say. But you guys, I think it's happening. I think the rumors are real. I think there's a groundswell around Banjo and Kazooie. I think they're coming to Smash. And I, I think they're going to be shadow dropped next week. I think they're going to be announced. Shadow dropped? Yep, I think they're going to be announced and released next week during E3. Oh, man, that's a good one. I'm going all in. I think I, it's happening. I'm so excited. I agree with you on the shadow drop. I don't... I mean, here's the thing. We have three different places that we, this could happen. If it is indeed Banjo-Kazooie, this could happen during the uh, Microsoft uh, conference. It'd be insane, um, and it would kind of shoot themselves in the foot, weirdly, because Nintendo would all of a sudden get all of the attention... But it, it it could also happen during the Smash thing, and it could also uh, the you know the tournament, and it also could happen during the actual direct. When do you think it'll drop there? Uh, and personally, I think it won't come until later in the week because they know, like their their servers got swamped just for Joker. Imagine a shadow <laughs> drop of this. Hmm. I, I do wonder, like, would it take the attention away from Microsoft? Because what if Microsoft have a Banjo Kazooie game of their own? And they use Smash to advertise it. Because that's like the, that's the perfect marketing campaign for Banjo. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and what what if as well? Like Microsoft have been known recently to stem outside of their own console ecosystem. What if that Banjo game, if it does exist, what if that comes to Switch as well? That's true. I, I yeah. No, I, I don't think necessarily that they might they might want to take the focus off of Microsoft by doing that at Microsoft conference. However, I did think think of this contingency. I do think that alongside Banjo Kazooie being released for Smash, I think maybe at uh, Xbox's conference, maybe we'll get confirmation of the uh, Xbox Live Arcade versions of, like, the remastered versions of Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie coming to Switch. I do think mm. that's actually going to happen as well. And maybe a Nintendo's Direct, but I kind of had this as kind of like a half prediction on top of that. I think along with them being in Smash that we're going to get Kazooie and Tooie for Switch. I mean, that'd be freaking awesome <laughs> yeah i mean you're expecting them separately rather than a port of rare replay though because here's the thing i was thinking about rare replay as well and um half of that collection is 360 games they're 360 backwards compatibility games True. which were never really ported to xbox one 
Um, so bringing that to Switch, I imagine, would be quite tricky, unless they've ported all the 360 games over again. Um, which would be great if they did, but I think you're probably right that they'll just stick with Banjo and Banjo Tooie. Yeah, I see them coming as their own individual releases, not together, but as their own individual releases outside of a rare replay port. I didn't really consider that, and that's a good point, John, but I kind of see Banjo ports individually being more likely than a full rare replay port. Real quick, do you what do you think about the possibility is instead of ports of the old Xbox Live Arcade versions, but Banjo-Kazooie getting the full Crash and Spyro treatment of oh, a remaster? That would be Ooh. so cool. I don't know if I think that's happening, just because Rare doesn't seem like they're interested in working on anything banjo these days. But God, I would love that. Well, it would have to be. It wouldn't have to be Rare. It could be. Oh, that's true. A number of companies. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a great point, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because like, um, look at yeah, Killer Instinct and uh, Battle Toads. They're, they're two IPs with two new games, <clears throat> and Rare is not involved at all. Right. In fact, ba- Battle Toads is this year, and uh, it, I, I can't remember who the developer is. It's someone fairly unknown. But it isn't unknown to Microsoft to just give those IPs to other studios. Mm-hmm. I feel like if Banjo's coming back, though, it's got to be... I think it really has to be in a whole brand new game. Rare Replay really wasn't that long ago, so it feels... Or it doesn't seem that long ago, at least. So it feels weird to be remaking them now. So I feel like if we get anything Banjo at Microsoft, it's going to be, I, I hope, a Banjo-Kazooie 3. Which would be a perfect setup for Banjo in Smash. Which, by the way, how do we just kind of like gloss over that? Banjo in Smash, guys. <laughs> Banjo-Kazooie in yes. Smash. Jeez. We're trying to justify it. <laughs> right. No, I, I could have a whole discussion about just them in Smash. <laughs> I'm could, so right? hyped, Andre. So part of the reason why for, for why we think it's likely is because you know their Nintendo and Microsoft partnership has been like really strong recently. It seems like they've been getting stronger. You know they've been working closer and closer over the years, and there've been rumor, you know rumblings, of course, uh, over, over the past few months of um well originally of Xbox games coming to Switch, which happened in the form of Cuphead, possibly more with like Ori and the Blind Forest. Um, and of course, people wonder that could extend even farther. There were rumors of a uh, Game Pass coming. Um, so Banjo does seem like it'd be a good time for this to happen, especially uh, you know that'd be a great way of like bringing you know uh, exciting old school Nintendo fans as well, like us, <laughs> who grew up with Banjo, and it would just be an incredible moment to see Banjo, another Western character, make his way into Smash Brothers, which is something that hasn't happened much at all. Yeah, I mean Banjo and Kazooie represent a very underrepresented part of Nintendo's history in Smash, and that is just so- that. The idea of having that filled with with those characters is so exciting. And Andre, I know you and I both are just so hyped for this possibility. And we've wanted these characters in Smash forever. So Mm -hmm. I think we all have. So I just, oh man, I hope it's happening. And I can't wait to see it actually be real if it is happening. Yeah. Again, again, I'd be pretty nuts if we get two, kind of, I guess, three brand new rare characters in a Smash Brothers game. So (laughs) Yeah, it's true. It's just all rare, which is kind of appropriate. Although Um, I will say I would laugh my butt off if they had the banjo kazooie like um transition that happens uh but and you so you think it's going to be then and then all of a sudden you hear a chainsaw rev up and it's conquer cutting it out oh, and coming in instead god. oh my gosh <laughs> no it's like another oh. fake out <laughs> Oh, that would be that would be such a gut that like that would be the the true version of uh, King K rules reveal trailer. Like, that would be <laughs> the actually cutting version of like, oh wow, this really hurts. <laughs> Conquer is an assist trophy. <laughs> oh man, we need it. <laughs> now, what would uh, what would their stage be? Ooh. I mean, it'd have to I, be Spiral Mountain, right? Yeah, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Maybe the bridge could fall apart as you're battling on it. I'm thinking that or Grunty's Lair. So wait, when you say when you say Grunty's Lair, do you mean like the inside or the top portion? Where you Sorry, battle with it's the inside, like the inside. I, I was thinking of like a fly, like a fly through of Grunty's Lair, but they're yeah, they would have to take certain creative liberties to make that happen. So I do yeah. think Spiral Mountain is probably more likely, as that's kind of you know, it's the emblematic starting point of Banjo-Kazooie, and that's kind of what fans know about that, you know, about those characters, where they come from. So, yeah, I feel like Spiral Mountain is is probably likely, and I do love the idea of the bridge to Grunty's Lair breaking mm-hmm. as you battle on it, so that seems likely to me. Here's a question, though. Will Sakurai give Banjo realistic bear noises, <laughs> like he does with DK and K. Rool? <laughs> God, I hope not. He, no, yeah, he has to. He has to have his grunts. You can't. He already has like a distinctive voice, more so than the Donkey Kong characters. He can't mess with uh-huh. that. So, <laughs> and like, I don't know how they would do it, but I would hope that that you know Banjo Kazooie's stage would include Grunty and su- Grunty rhyming in some form. Now you can't have her subtitles covering oh, all the percentages. What? Oh, this is how you bring back the uh, like the. Um, 
uh, Palutena's guidance sequence in Ultimate. Like, yes! Have yes! Yes! You have Grunty yes! commenting all the, uh, in rhyme to all the fighters. Perfect. Oh, that'd be, especially with how Banjo-Kazooie already broke the fourth wall quite often. Like, that is a perfect way to do it. It wouldn't require oh, any, like, voice man. acting or anything. You just write a bunch of text. Oh, this needs to happen. I now. want that so <laughs> much. <laughs> great. And I mean, e even if it's not a good, you know, for like serious focused play, just playing whatever and having you know, a great time in this match and having, you know, Grunty's rhymes about whatever character just <laughs> coming across the bottom of the screen, maybe it would cover up the percentages for a little bit, but in my opinion, totally worth it for at least one stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plus, think of the music we'll get in that stage. Guys. Oh, man. Brand uh, okay, if we get, well, with new music, I hope Grant, Grant Kirkhope comes back to. Uh, to up to update his own themes, which would be right. fantastic. Mm. <laughs> oh God! I don't know. I, just, I hope this Kirk is happening. Said, uh, th th said, "Don't get your hopes up," didn't he? About banjo and smash. I don't I actually didn't know he said that, but I, it, well, I mean, I think okay. So it doesn't mean anything for two reasons. One, he could just be lying. Two, he may be unevolved. So in which case, it may not be him doing the remixes. But sure. um, I don't think it matters. I don't think that means much in the grand scheme of things. Like, look, I mean, the creators of King K. Rule. Didn't even know anything about his design in this going into Smash. I don't think they knew he was going into Smash. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Granted. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on from Banjo as much as I would love to talk about forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna bring it back down to uh, Earth a little bit for something we do know about, being Link's Awakening. And I've talked about this before. Um, I think they are gonna announce one of the major new features in this game is co-op uh, with like a helper type character. Maybe not like a true second Link or something, but maybe more of a like a tingle like feature where like you you know, can float around above and like drop bombs like a Wind Waker. Not necessarily that, but like something along those lines. Um, also, I predict the return of the camera shop from Link's Awakening Deluxe, which was the first remake of the game. <laughs> uh, in this case, though, instead of having predetermined pictures taking a set points in the game, you'll be able to take your own pictures wherever you want, kind of like the camera box in Wind Waker. Um, again, another Wind Waker comparison, <laughs> where uh, you can take, like, except from the third person. So while the main game will be from a top-down perspective, you actually can take, like, first-person style pictures using this, or selfies if you want, in the environment. That'd be really cool. I can see interesting. that. Interesting. Yeah. And if that were to happen, the implications of being able to move the camera around is kind of interesting, too. Because in the reveal trailer, there's a very um, particular moment where the camera pans in, and it affects the, uh, the depth of field around the player. So it kind of looks like the camera can move in and out. And I wonder, can you actually move it behind Link? Because there's no loading screens as well. Like you can go straight from the, vi the village to the forest and there's no transition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that'd be really cool if you could actually move the camera into a third person view as well and play from like an entirely new viewpoint. God, that'd be so cool. Well, be I, how cool would it be to see Kahalan Island from that perspective? Like that would just be oh, so neat. Be amazing. But they're holding something back, right? I mean, they've, this, they this remake be. so far looks one-to-one. -one. There are no differences in the debut trailer. And actually, I had a prediction for Link's Awakening as well, and that's that they'll add voice acting to the cutscenes. So we've oh. seen the cutscene of Link being shipwrecked, and that's that's not much really to go on there. But um, when it comes to actual in-game proper story events, I think they'll go the Breath of the Wild route. Um, apart from, it won't be in-game, they'll animate them just like the intro cutscene. And just uh, like just flesh that out more, because that that there's a lot of potential there. Oh and god, that that'd really be like... heartbreaking. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I know. You're. I don't know. That, that that's that's a risky move, John. I think that's possible, but they they better get that you know beach scene about halfway through the game where you know Link and Marin meet at the beach. They they got to get that perfectly right because it's such a mm. sweet, quietly nice little scene, and it kind of underscores how melancholy the whole game is. And just in general with Link's Awakening, I hope they get the the, the feel of the game right. But I do, I agree right. with you. I do think it's very possible that they will make those their own cutscenes. Yeah. Right. And I guess it's also been a long time since Link's Awakening. And in that time, Nintendo have new IPs. And Link's Awakening is kind of famous for having a lot of different Nintendo IPs crammed in there. <laughs> so I do wonder if they're going to refresh that a bit. Like maybe have like Pearl and Marina <laughs> like chilling on the island somewhere. Or, uh, nice. I, don't, I don't know, just like, have just like fresh up their portfolio a bit more in there. That'd be pretty cool. I'd, li I'd like that a lot. I mean, all I had to say about Link's Awakening, because I we've so seen so little, uh, is just that we'll get a release date. Exact date. <laughs> when? August. Like what August was. <laughs> August, uh, <laughs> I need to look at Fridays. I'm going to just say 17th, though, off the top of my head. <laughs> That's a Saturday, Derek. Okay, 16th. <laughs> You know, it's funny, I was actually thinking, too, that we get a release date, but I think this might be Nintendo's other, you know, big Nintendo Day November game. Well, you know we're getting Pokemon Sword and Shield on November 15th. I feel like we could get maybe Link's Awakening 18th, 21st, whatever, I know, I haven't checked the calendar as to what days those fall on, but this feels like a big holiday release to me. 
So Maybe? I was I, mean, I was considering that before, but they've they've done that before. They had Mario 3D World and uh, Zelda: Link Between Worlds right. on the exact same day. The difference is they were on different platforms. So I don't see Nintendo redoing mm. that or anything close Just to playing. that on Switch. Um, I was actually feeling August 2, Derek. I think August 9th was a day of looking at. I don't know if this will be a big holiday title. I don't think it has... I don't know if it has a weight behind it to make it a big holiday <laughs> title. It's not a new game. It's a remake it, or reimagining. Um, That's a good point. Yeah. So I do think it'll be... I do think it'll come a little bit earlier in the year. And I think Pokemon will probably, probably be their only major focus for November. Really? Okay, I think I think I was going in thinking that they would have to have something besides Pokemon, but they don't necessarily. So that's that's also true. Well, the thing is here is we're judging it off games we already know. There could yeah. very well be a new reveal that fills that November slot as well. Mm-hmm. Totally. Exactly. Yeah, Star Fox Time Cop or whatever. <laughs> Time Patrol. Time Cop. <laughs> <laughs> a slip in time. <laughs> a slip oh, in man. time. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was that. going for. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I misheard. Uh, that's all right. Uh, I, I, going off Zelda, though, I do think we're going to get another Shadow Drop, this time for Cadence of Hyrule directly after the E3 presentation. Like, we haven't it. heard anything about it. People are wondering when it's coming. We got a Shadow Drop of uh, Hollow Knight uh, last year. It's Cadence of Hyrule's turn, especially because it's Nintendo themselves this time. And we know it's coming out this month. They said in a, uh, in a Japanese um, video on the NCL YouTube channel that it's coming in June. So there's no question about that. It's just when in June. And uh, I can see it happening, Derek. I can see them just dropping it immediately and us just rushing to cover it. <laughs> I mean, this may... Oh, go ahead. There's not a whole lot of time between the end of E3 and when Mario Maker 2 comes out, and they probably don't want the competing right with each other. I wonder if they do compete, though, because one's a, a budget eShop game and the other one's a full-price retail game. This may have they this may have since been debunked. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that there uh, that in the, uh, the Nintendo of Japan's uh, website source code, somebody found that it was releasing on June 20th already. Right, it could possibly that could just be a placeholder though. That is a Thursday, know. but yeah, okay. Right. I was I was, yeah. I was thinking it makes sense to shadow drop it during E3 too, but that was kind of at odds with what I thought was you know kind of a an implicit like oh it's coming on June 20th. But I do think that a shadow drop during E3 makes a lot more sense. All right, another prediction. Let's, uh, so uh, I think for obvious reasons, we're not going to see Metroid Prime 4 at all in this direct. At E3 and Treehouse Live, it's just not going to happen. It obviously restarted development recently, so it's too soon. That said, I think we might finally see Metroid Prime Trilogy uh, during this direct. It feels like it's the right time to kind of tide Metroid fans over who might be a little concerned about Prime 4 having just restarted development, wondering, oh man, when when are we going to get something new? What's happening? It feels like Metroid Prime Trilogy... Is the right it's the right time to kind of smooth that over with fans and it just seems like it's it feels like it's the right time for it so i think we're going to get metroid prime trilogy shown off during this direct maybe with a release date maybe not but i think it'll be there i have no doubt that prime trilogy exists it just feels like we're always predicting <laughs> i know yeah. one, one and, of these uh, times it'll be true <laughs> right exactly i think it does exist i think they're just holding on to it until prime 4 is more ready yeah but you're right they, maybe, maybe now's the time maybe they want to just hold us over until then but, yeah, I, I, I believe it exists. I just don't know when, though. I believe it exists. I don't think it's coming this E3. Mm-hmm. Okay. Agreed. I think instead we're going to get a tease for the next Mercury Steam uh, Me- Metroid game after Samus Returns. Ooh, that's a good Steamy. one. That would be cool. <laughs> that's what I think we're yeah. getting. And I, I, I think that would hold over people a lot better, especially if they either remake another of the, uh, the Metroid games or uh, finally do something with all those uh, storyline te- teases they had in Samus Returns and have a proper Metroid uh, 5. What else can they remake, mm. though, beyond Super Metroid? Super Metroid well, Fusion. Been... Yeah, I believe um, during the development of Samus Returns, they said they originally went to Nintendo with a pitch to remake Super Metroid. So I wonder if they're going to like see that to fruition this time. Oh, uh, man, that, though, I feel like we're wow. making that game as a minefield. That's... <laughs> it is. Absolutely yeah, it is. it is. Personally, I prefer they just do Metroid 5, because it's been way too long already. Yeah. Um, Fusion was, like, what, 2003? Same, yeah, d- same day now. as yeah. Uh, Prime, so yeah. Yeah. How would you guys feel if they if they just announced a, a Switch port, like an, you know, an HD up port of Samus Returns for Switch? I'm still cool with that, because it's a great game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd be okay with it. I mean, I, I want something more. But yeah, me too. If, if it's what they do, then yeah, I'll take it. Well, here's a prediction for Luigi's Mansion 3. Ooh. Now, this is something we actually all discussed um, internally, but we didn't actually publish it on our YouTube channel, though. Um, that the villain of the game could very well be Guigi, who is the co-op partner in Luigi's Mansion 3DS. And uh, I think the reason we thought this was because some blog posts kind of 
like pushed us in that direction, it probably won't be that case. But just imagine that creepy little blob being the um, <laughs> the, the mastermind behind this this uh, hotel takeover. And um, they they were sort of researching the powers of goo. So I wonder, can he have like some superpowers? Can he can he turn into a giant like green blob like in Ghostbusters? Like <laughs> what can this what can this horrifying thing do? God, then I'm just imagining the final boss is Gooigi at the, as the size of the uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. You're right. One that was my exact <laughs> yeah. first thought when, I, when we were yeah. talking about the about the. I do love movie. that idea. That would be great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he played some role. I don't know if it'll be that uh, that central to it. Um, however, I do have my own predictions for Luigi's Mansion 3. And that's, mm-hmm. uh, one, they're going back to a more a style of the original game. It's going to be a more open mansion. Not necessarily open world mansion, but it'll be more open where you can like backtrack throughout the entire mansion if you want at any point. Uh, there will be a character switching mechanic. You can swap between whatever characters you presumably rescue during it. So it won't be just Luigi's Mansion. It'll be whoever's mansion you want to play as. <laughs> um, <laughs> And there'll be a uh, there'll be a four player co op mode, and then finally there will be optional Joy Con motion controls where you can treat the Joy Con as if it were the Polar Gust itself. So cool. um, this, what's interesting about this as well is the title of the game right now is Luigi's Mansion Three Working Title, and I wonder if the title is even Luigi's Mansion Three at all. Like, what if you take this different character mechanic and put it into the title itself? I don't know what you'd call it, but it doesn't have to be Luigi's Mansion anymore. It could be uh, I don't know, like. Um, I don't know, like Luigi and Friends' mansion, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Lu- Luigi or she and Luigi's mansion. She's getting she's yeah, get Luigi perfect. in there. Nice. Yeah. Um, do you think that we'll get a release date for Luigi's Mansion Three, Andre? Yes, no doubt. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. On, 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 uh, everyone but Andre answered that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think so too. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I think it'll be September. Really, I, I was going to go with October because it makes sense. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I'm thinking late September because they want that. Okay. Ma- I mean, they want to maximize the amount of time it's relevant. So. Um, and that's close enough to October, might as well be October. <laughs> and it's playable at the show, so there's no way it's missing 2019. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I also predict it'll look uh, considerably better than it looked in the previous trailer. I think so. Yeah, Yeah, I think so Good too. Uh, just two quick things uh, for predictions. Uh, we'll get release dates for both Astral Chain and Damon X Machina. I oh, I have, a, so. I have a prediction. They will show more of Damon X Machina and I'll continue to not care about it. <laughs> that's I think a that's very a solid prediction. prediction. Yep, I think we can all agree on that one. <laughs> I am I am curious about Astral Chain though, so it, it, it looks good. Yeah, it does. Uh, I do have another prediction here. Uh, this is something I have a little LOL written next to, just to set your expectations. Uh, I know you guys are just going to be absolutely shocked and crushed, but I do not think we're going to see Mother Three this evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, I one of these one of these years maybe it'll actually come true, but I'm I'm over it. because remember I used to say every year it's coming it's happening. Mm-hmm. No, I've I've nope. I've lost. Hope my is dead. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, no, it's, it's not ever happening. Do you guys think we'll actually get gameplay of Bayonetta three, or are they going to just focus on Astral Chain? I think Astral Chain's the one. The Astral Chain was re- uh, revealed this year, right back in February, I believe, mm-hmm. and it feels mm-hmm. like that's that's Platinum Games' focus now. So Bayonetta three is probably in active development, but I don't think we're going to see it. It feels like they're not ready. It just feels like it's just not quite time to, to have Bayonetta 3 shown off. Maybe in a, in a direct later this year, perhaps at the Game Awards this year, but it just doesn't feel ready. Uh, here's a prediction. So, Retro Studios, we know they're working on Prime 4 now, but what have they been doing since Tropical Freeze? Well, my answer to that is, uh, I'm going to read out exactly what I have written here. Retro's next game is Donkey Kong Country Returns 3. Game Explain is happy, everyone else is not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I'm all in. Yeah, I I'm want cool that to be real. I hope so. God, I hope so. Tropical Freeze is such a great, underappreciated gem. For as much appreciation as it gets, it's still underappreciated. And the, the reaction, uh, in hindsight, was embarrassing. Even from us, I think, probably. <laughs> like, that game, that game deserved better at its, or at its announcement. And I've learned my lesson. I will not be disappointed they announce another sequel to Donkey Kong, because Tropical Freeze is such a step up from two, or sorry, from one. If they can repeat that again with a third one, oh my god. Uh, now, I don't know whether it's another Donkey Kong game that's coming, John. However, I do I, I do think that Retro had something else working. I don't think they went four years just uh, just fumbling around aimlessly with nothing to show for it. So I think there is something, and I think we will see it at E3, whether it's Tropical Freeze 2 or not. I have three words for you, Andre. Yep. King K. Rule. <laughs> yes, that's exactly yes. what I was going to say. That the time is rule. right. Yep. Oh, man, oh, that'd man. be amazing. But it, that, oh, that'd be so killer. I'm in. Like, with him and Smash, the time is right for him to come back as a series villain. And not only that, bring back the Animal Buddies. And not just Rambi. Mm. I want Espresso. I want Winky. I want even Ellie. I want the Animal Buddies back. 
Mm-hmm. Now, here's mm-hmm. the question, it- uh, John. Do you think they're going to be in space? <laughs> well, you know what? I think there will be a space level. It's about, it's about time. Because Tropical Freeze goes all over the place, all over the world. Uh, and that's kind of its gimmick. So I think we have to go further. We have, we have to go outside the planet this time. And there is a precedent. Donkey returns, Kong did go to the moon in the first one. Yeah, Returns kind of does it, but he didn't He didn't last long there. He needs to have a, a longer trip this time. He needs to dump more planets out of the sky. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just destroy the entire solar system. <laughs> Um, I've got one here that's a bit out of left field. I think the the next we're gonna get our next Wii U to switch port during the direct. I think we're gonna get that reveal, and I have a feeling for whatever reason, I think it's gonna be Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Ooh, hmm. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Tokyo Mirage Sessions port coming to Switch. I think it's if it doesn't happen at E3, I think it's gonna happen eventually. But I don't know. It feels like the time's right, so I'm throwing it out there. So you think Tokyo Mirage Sessions before Pikmin Three? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that that port makes so much sense because it barely used the gamepad, and it was a great RPG. It was just overlooked right. at the time because I think people wanted it to be something that it wasn't. But I had a bunch of fun with it, so yeah. I hope that happens. But on the Pikmin front, um, I think, I mean, Pikmin Four. We've, it was apparently nearly finished like four years ago or five years ago now, <laughs> and I have a feeling they're talking about Hey Pikmin now because it's just been so long uh, since they said that. <laughs> Uh, I want to say Pikmin 4, but I can also see Pikmin 3 happening. Honestly, I have a feeling they'd do a port more before 4. <laughs> I kind of yeah. sort of do too. It, it just feels like things have been stalling on Pikmin forever, and it, it just feels like there's been no forward momentum with that series, and I, I kind of agree with you, Derek. I, even though it's been so long, I still kind of feel like a Pikmin 3 port is likelier than Pikmin 4. I think so too, yeah. Especially the... Uh, didn't they retroactively add... Um, Oh no, they retro- retroactively added gamepad controls. Never mind. But it had uh, Wii Remote controls built in, the pointer controls, so they can just emulate right. that with the uh, Joy Cons. So yeah, I think that's more likely too, just given Nintendo's history of how they've been treating Wii U games. <laughs> you know, rather than make new ones, they'll just port them over first. Uh, and I think that will continue here. I think we'll see Pikmin 3 at some point. I don't know if it'll be at E3 though. In fact, I predict it won't be. I think that's a direct announcement, you know, maybe later this year. So Sure. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's not the big game, is it? it could, that could be announced any time. Right. Though, um, going off Ash's initial prediction of Tokyo Mirage Sessions, that jogged my memory to a game that was revealed in the Switch presentation that still isn't out yet, the initial January one of 2017. Oh, right? yeah. And, yeah, uh, Shimagami Tensei Five. We have not heard a whisper out of that for a long time now, and it was one of the very first Switch games to be announced. Will we see it this year at E3? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my prediction is yes. <laughs> actually, you know what? I agree with you, John. I had that down here too, below Tokyo Mirage Sessions port. I actually feel like we might get some more information on Shin Megami Tensei Five. Not like a whole blowout release date, everything, but I feel like they might call some attention to it this this E3. It's about time. Yeah, I feel like that's better suited for a direct rather than E3. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's it's difficult to say because we haven't really uh, that, like Persona's pushed that franchise really far, and I feel like after Persona Five, Shimigami Tensei might be a bigger deal in the West now. I guess we'll see, but I kind of feel like it's it's bigger than just a normal direct um, game. See, I I would agree with you, except Persona Five pointedly does not have Shimigami Tensei in its title. That's true. <laughs> it Actually, is just they, they Persona. Kind of Persona, themselves. Persona Five pushed Persona in the West. I don't know about Shimigami uh-huh. Tensei. Yeah. Do you guys think that? <laughs> do you think the ship has sailed on on you know because we have Persona Five Scramble or whatever it's called? I think it is Scramble. We know that. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think the ship has sailed on like we got Joker and Smash? It's so weird that there isn't mm-hmm. a single Persona game like core Persona game on the horizon for Switch. Do you think maybe three, four, five, anything could happen in E3? I'm going to say, um, I say no chance of five this year because Persona 5 The Royal is launching in Japan this year and they've made it very clear that's a PlayStation 4 game. Right. I think possibly next year with the localization we could get a Switch version 2 but I think there's no chance of Persona 5 coming to Switch this year. Persona 3 and 4 though, maybe. I think that could happen. That'd be awesome. That'd, That'd be, be great. great. Totally down for that. <laughs> yeah. So my next prediction is uh, part of the reason why I didn't predict Luigi's Mansion for um, November, or sorry, for uh, for October, is because I think there's another game, another huge game that's going to fill that slot, and that is Super Mario Party 2. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, I don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> it's coming October 18th. It's going to, it's not just going to double 
the amount of boards in the original. It's going to have one more. We're talking nine boards here, baby. <laughs> no, they're bringing God. back. They're bringing back the themed costumes from Mario Party 2. They're going all in on this one. They're really evoking the idea of the original, you know, the original series. Um, and for the first time, it will have online board-based multiplayer with friends. Nice. Will it have every um, mini game playable online? Because Super Mario Party had like ten. <laughs> uh, I guess it would have to as part of the board. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it feels too soon though, doesn't it? I, I don't know if it does. It used to be annually. Mario Party annual. came out annually before. Yeah. 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 Here's the thing as well: <clears throat> Super Mario Party was prime for DLC. You could you could have updated that with a new board, with new characters, and they didn't. And I feel like the reason they didn't is because they're just making the next one. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. it. That's a, that's a game that was begging for more content. Didn't get it. Never got it. <laughs> and uh, I don't think they've been you know, sitting around doing nothing. I think they've been actively working on Super Mario Party 2. So, especially with how well that game sold, like it, it's I think one of the best-selling games in the series. I, uh, I can see it. I can definitely see it. I think another thing company, coming is I think we're going to get a reveal of our next Kirby game. What form Ooh. that takes... Not a clue, but we're definitely getting another Kirby on the Switch. Uh, Will Kirby be in 3D for the first time? <laughs> no. I really <laughs> hope so because it feels like they can't. Like they sort of, with um, uh, with Star Allies, it felt like they pushed the 2D model as far as it could go. Mm -hmm. It feels like they need to go 3D next, and whether they do or not, no idea. But please, <laughs> or give us yeah, our Kirby I'm RPG. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, this Triple Deluxe was a great game, and then Robobot came along and just went nuts. And I want this game to do that. Like, they've already done Kirby on the Switch. They did it. They did it well. But now it's time for the crazy, exciting one. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think they've they've taken the formula that was established in Return to Dreamland that has kind of carried all the way through Star Allies. I, as you said, Derek, I think they've taken that absolutely as far as as, as it can be taken. Like Star Allies had already started feeling kind of generic and stale so i think they need to really switch it up for for this new kirby i really hope we're getting a new kirby at e3 although you uh john you mentioned triple deluxe and planet robobot if, if they need a little more time to work on the next big kirby experience i'd be perfectly happy with a kirby double pack that's like a, an up hd version of triple deluxe and planet robobot especially because robobot's one of the best kirby games of all time yeah I, yeah, I, I mean, we'll definitely get more Kirby's on Switch. Um, I don't think it's going to be at E3, though. It just doesn't feel like it's time yet. I, I agree with you, Andre. I yeah, have a, it might I be want a it so badly, but I don't feel it at E3. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a lower profile title. Even though they you know they sell pretty consistently, um, I think it's going to be something that will be that will headline like a director or something. Oh, well, here's a prediction. So. <laughs> The Mario RPG series is kind of in a funny place, where both Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi are sort of fighting for the same spot, and now we only have one console, so there's no real way to split them up anymore. So I was thinking, like, should we do a Paper Mario or a Mario and Luigi game? And I thought, screw that, let's do a Bowser and Bowser Jr. game, where we're going to have the uh, father and son mechanic and um, just have them bond throughout the entire game and show a new light of this adorable uh, parental relationship. <laughs> I kind of love that idea, especially with how they're looking into uh, those two as a you know those two as a proper father and son in like some of the Nintendo like uh, app ads, for instance, or the trailers. That is cool. I'd be down. They need to do something to freshen up Mario and Luigi and change the characters entirely is a way to go about it. Whether it's Bowser and Bowser Jr., Wario and Waluigi, something. Just give us something new, please, God. I'm yeah, so sick and, of those games. Peach and Daisy. Ah, Captain Toad and Toadette. Of course. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> anything. Literally anything. Goomba and another Goomba. I don't care. Just do something. Yeah. It's funny because like, Mario and Luigi as a series used to feel so fresh and so it exciting did. with every new yeah. entry. And now I could not want another one less right now. Yep. I, I kind of hope they'd go the Paper Mario route. I'd like to see Paper Mario return to its, you know, proper roots and get a new proper RPG on the Switch. I think that would be really exciting. Mm -hmm. Full remake of Thousand not, Year That's Door. not a prediction. I'm not saying, that, Ash, that we didn't get a new Paper Mario Thousand Year Door at E3. You were wrong. I'm not saying that's happening. <laughs> it should happen, then. It should. <laughs> it really it should. should. At least a re remake one, one or two and people would be... You know, just so happy. <laughs> one, one like could really use it too. Like it's always fun going from one to two, and even though two still standard definition, it looks like high def compared to one. It really does, right? Um, and, and uh, Col Color Splash nailed the art style too. It I did. Think it's a beauty. It really did. Like I would love to see the first two games remade in that art style or to that caliber. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. what do you guys what do you guys think we'll see of uh, Super Mario Maker two in the direct? I'm kind of thinking it'll be minimized. I think it'll be more of a treehouse thing, and we. 
Uh, we may barely even see it. It already had its own whole direct. I don't know how much is left for them to show us of that game. Hmm. I think we have the potential of maybe seeing that hidden game set. Because there's obviously that space there. And, I mean, the game isn't that far away. What more can they show? So I guess they could try and push the post-release content. And maybe just give us a glimpse about what that game could be. Maybe that seems that. likelier to me. I mean, why they don't need to to give Mario Maker 2 a lot of time in their E3 Direct, because the game comes out at the end of the month, and they've already blown it out in its own Direct. So I feel like they don't really need to give it that time. Right. I, yeah. I think it's more likely, like, they, they when we went to a preview, they mentioned that there are a few things to unlock in the game. Knowing Nintendo, they're going to blow out all the unlockables. <laughs> like, oh, here yeah. you go, here's <laughs> what you unlock. They might during the Treehouse. I don't think they will during the Direct. Um, I agree. Yeah, and I don't think we'll get any more styles in this time. I, I do think they're coming. I don't think we're gonna get it here. The game carries the game carries itself as is. I don't think they need to detract from that with upcoming content, which I think will be safe for a future direct where they'll blow it out. It's like, hey, look, by the way, here's a whole new style, which uh, you had no idea was coming, even though it was obvious. <laughs> that really does feel to me like a sleepy August direct type reveal. Like, yeah. you know, it's the middle of the summer, not much happening. Hey, Mario Maker Two, new theme. You know, that that just seems more likely to me. Mm -hmm. um, I had this as a prediction, and then this morning uh, I got a PR release basically confirming it. I was going to say that uh, <laughs> Mario and Sonic uh, at the Olymp Tokyo Olympic Games gameplay was going to be shown, probably featured, probably get a release date, even, or, unless we already have one. Uh, and then I got a second PR saying, uh, playable at our de at our uh, booth. <laughs> so I had I have to imagine that it'd also be playable at Nintendo's booth, so that might be the and one of the and more games. So yeah, we're gonna see more of uh, Mario and Sonic. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll definitely be on Treehouse for sure, if not uh, like a short trailer in the direct. Um, yeah. As part of that, though, I predict there'll be no new Mario sports games this year. This will be that. This will be what that is. Um, it has multiple sports already. Mm -hmm. I also predict. Uh, I'm gonna predict a few things. I don't think will be there. Uh, there'll be no Mario Kart 2. I saw a few people holding, hoping for that. No Mario Kart 2. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. gonna be no uh, no new proper uh, Mario game like 3D Mario. Uh, no no new like brand new Zelda or anything. And also, there's gonna be no new Amiibo. Amiibo's dead. <laughs> yeah, I, I had that down as a prediction too. I don't think there will be any Amiibo shown in the E3 Direct or even talked about. Yep. Yeah. I beg to differ. Ooh, I think okay. during Treehouse Alive, they will put out the Joker Amiibo for just a split second and then put them away. Okay, actually, I take it back. There will be, yes, well, yeah. uh, their Smash Amiibo, I think, will yeah. continue. Other than Smash Amiibo, I think. Yeah, exactly. Than... Like, yeah. new Amiibo mm -hmm. series. Or exactly, like that. yeah. yeah. That oh, yeah, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of something else that's also dead that I do not think will be in the Direct at all, 3DS. <laughs> that's pretty obvious. Oh, yeah, that's gone. <laughs> there oh, yeah. is no 3DS in the Direct at all. Not happening. Watch, they're going to announce, like, an Amiibo exclusive game just for 3DS. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Well, here's something that is dead, but I want to be alive again, and that is Super Monkey Ball. So, oh, recently please. we had the trademark of Banana Blitz, which I thought, I don't want Banana Blitz back, but what they could do is they could do a compilation title and have, like, uh, Monkey Ball 1 and 2 and the arcade Monkey Ball, and then maybe Banana Blitz if they have to, but really all I want is just the first two Monkey Ball games. With online, um, in HD, that's all I want. John, here's what I want. I want Monkey Ball in Labo VR. Oh, <laughs> oh that, man. That would make you feel so sick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. You use a bird <laughs> use a bird toy con <laughs> to, to, to tilt the platform by tilting your head. You uh, pull on the handles and jump. Um, there's now a jump in Monkey Ball, by the way. I'm adding it. <laughs> I think <laughs> that was added, it, yeah. And you can hold yeah, it to gl yeah. <laughs> glide as well. So there you go. This is perfect. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know wow. if I use the, word, use the word perfect, but <laughs> <laughs> it'll be interesting. It also comes with, like, with a Labo bucket. You can barf it, too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Perfect. Um, I, I do hope that some sort of Monkey Ball presence happens on Switch. I miss that series so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, awesome. they, they kind of they kind of kill momentum for for a while. Like they overdid it for a minute with uh, kind of like they lower did. quality ports. Definitely. Um, but it's been long enough now where I think they could bring it back. Just I mean, and just call it Super Monkey Ball. Like treat it as like a reimagining or a reboot of the series. Well, it's not. It's not like there's a deep mythology here. Just give us Monkey Ball. <laughs> also, mm -hmm. Monkey Monkey Punch, whoever it was Monkey Blast, whatever the punching game was, that'd be perfect on the switches. Like on the Switch screen, like a top down perspective, everyone can like just surround it and play with their own Joy Cons. That'd be so fun. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect local Joy-Con game. Just, just totally, man. You can have like a uh, monkey target. You can have uh, monkey race. All yeah. of those would work with a single Joy-Con. They would. Yeah. Yeah. Be great. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of other Sega games, I think 
I think we might see one other game beyond Monkey Ball there. And I have here either the uh, the most likely one is probably the Panzer Dragoon remakes, uh, uh-huh. one and two. But I also think it's possible that we might finally get the one of the Yakuza games on the Switch. Or, please, 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 Skies of Arcadia. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah, those are all great choices. Panzer Dragoon, possibly. Um, they, they've been announced already. They're just mm. very low-key at the moment. Though. They're not really showing it. But I guess you know, this is the place to show it, right? Um, yeah, that'd be great if they did that. Those Skies of Arcadia, that's the dream, man. I hope so. <laughs> it really is. It really, I mean, if we're talking about Sega things we really like that I think would actually work really well on Switch, let's get House of the Dead ports, just a whole House of the Dead series port on Switch. I think that would be super cool, but again, not happening. L- with Labo VR Blaster support. Oh, that would actually be <laughs> awesome! <laughs> would I didn't awesome? think about that! That would, would that be, be awesome? insane! Oh. And it'd be like playing the original because it's it's in like 480p. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh man. Uh, I mean, if we're if we're talking about things, this is a prediction, kind of a pie in the sky thing that I'd really want. Not necessarily think it, things going to happen, but uh, Sunku, the producer and composer for Rhythm Heaven, did recently say that if there's enough demand, that he would be willing to create a Rhythm Heaven for Switch. Now, I don't think that's happening yet. It may be ever, but maybe to test the waters for such a demand. Maybe Rhythm Heaven and Mega Mix port for Switch. I think it, it would make a lot of sense. I'm not saying I think it's going to happen, but this is my pie in the sky dream prediction. I want it to happen. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, not played any of the Rhythm Heaven games, but that'd be a good way to try to get people into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking like Rhythm Heaven with HD Rumble. Oh man, they, there's so much oh, cool yes. stuff they could do with that. HD Rumble, HD Period. <laughs> HD Period, yeah. <laughs> Um, it'd be nice to play that game to play that game on a console with a proper sound system, which I know you could do on the Wii, but right. it's been stuck in handhelds for far too long. I would love to see it on Switch. And it's such a great like I've got had so much fun like introducing other people to Rhythm Heaven via Rhythm Heaven Fever. You can't do that on a handheld. That what was so great about Fever is that you could do that and it was a great party game. People would, would walk by, whoa, what's that? This is cool. Get Rhythm Heaven back on a console type format. Uh, it could be so good. Yeah. That'd be great. On the indie front, I think we'll have a small section dedicated to big indie games. So maybe when they also announce that Cadence of High Rule is going to be released after the, the Direct, we'll also get a little section about uh, revealing gameplay for Shantae 5, in addition to um, uh, the Hollow Knight sequel, and I think the Untitled Goose Game is going to get a title and a release date. <laughs> Can the title just be Untitled Goose Game? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really hope to that's reveal. it. Like, we're, 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 like, please officially announce the title for Untitled Goose Game. It just fades out and it's exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. I would be so down for that, actually. <laughs> I think Konami's going to be at this show. And um, I think they're going to they're gonna try and play us to start with. And they'll have the uh, Castlevania and Contra logos on screen. And then show trailers for the collections. And we'll be like, guys, we know about this. This is old stuff. And then the logo is going to stay on screen. And they will be replaced with two R's. Castlevania R and Contra R. Oh, two man. brand new Contra and Castlevania games. Oh, wow. That would be cool. Man, you're I... making me seem uh, restrained, John. Because I was just saying that the next Castlevania collection was going to be teased. Where we get the uh, Game Boy Advance and uh, DS and then uh, those those titles. Along with Symphony of the Night and Rondo. <laughs> And that's on top of Castlevania R. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. I, I'm still... I, I feel a little better about Konami right now, but I'm still not fully trusting them yet. So as, as much as I want to go in on that, I'm like, Konami's still a little... Eh, I'm not sure. I want to believe, and they're getting better, but I'm not sure I'm quite there yet. Hmm. I will just say, Bomberman R got better. Like they, it they, did. They updated that game a lot, and it's pretty good now. Yeah, that's a great... Yeah, really good point. Mm-hmm. I hope so, man. I, I'd love that. I don't... I mean, I'm not sure what I would expect from those games. I'd also really just enjoy them bringing the Rebirth games <laughs> to the Switch, uh-huh. or just consoles yeah, in general. Too. So, yeah, there's there's a lot that Konami could do that would make me happy. Will they do it? Mm. Mm, I don't know. Right. I, I have one last set of predictions. Uh, right. I think we're going to see quite a bit from Square Enix. Uh, we've already seen... Uh, the trademark for something called the coll- the collection of mana, which means that Secret of Mana triple pack that came out in Japan, what a year ago now, might finally be coming to the uh, worldwide, which would be freaking awesome. 
I'd love that they revealed that during here. Um, but I also put out there that maybe we'll get Bravely Default ports or a new Bravely Default game. But the other big thing I have, I think they're going to port uh, Chrono Trigger to the Switch. What? Where will did you, that come will from? Just be the PC version. <laughs> like, do, are, are you expecting just the PC release? Oh yeah, it's, it's going to be in the same vein oh, okay. as like Final Fantasy, you know, the Final Fantasy games and whatever we have. But I still think they're going to put Chrono Trigger on the Switch. You just dropped like three bombshells there, Derek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean. First, the first one, like, let's just dissect what you just said. The first one has um, a game that's never been released um, worldwide before, mm -hmm. being the third Secret of Mana game. Then you got Bravely Default 3, which is... <laughs> <laughs> that's another huge one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then Chrono Trigger. You need to like has their own press conference. they got to fill it up somehow. Yeah. You don't just say, oh yeah, Chrono Trigger's coming to Switch. you got to let me breathe first before you... <laughs> not, just, not just that, oh yeah, Bravely mm. Third. Yeah, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Collection of Mana. Man, you got to let someone breathe before you drop this stuff. I, nope. Man, I hard I, and fast. <laughs> so I do, I do agree with you on Collection of Mana. I actually think it is going to happen, at, like, finally, and it's super exciting. Chrono Trigger, I'm a little less sure on, at least at E3. I think they will do it eventually, and I think it would be the Steam version, because that has become pretty much the de facto standard now, having all the DS extras and all the anime stuff and the galleries and stuff from the PlayStation version. So I think it's possible that we'll get that. Um, Bravely Third, man, I, I almost predicted that. And I really want to, because I want that game like fire, but I don't know if E3 is the place for it. I hope so, but I don't know if I see it happening at E3. But Didn't I, Octopath hey. Traveler get revealed at E3? That was at the January presentation for oh, the right. Switch. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, that, that, that kind of says something, though, because that's, that's the Switch's entire debut. If anything, that's bigger than E3. That's true, and and we could. I mean, maybe we'd get. Maybe it's possible we could get like a default in second, you know, HD remaster in advance of third. I could see that maybe happening, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I'm not sure if we'll get third at at uh, E3. But I got, I would love that. Now, uh, really quick, going back to Collection of Mana, as huge a deal as it would be to get a localized second in Setsu three, and I do think that if if this is happening, I think they're going to do that. But what if they took the easy way out and gave us Secret of Evermore instead? How pissed would you be? <laughs> I mean, I don't know much about Secret of Evermore, so I don't. It, it's like, eh? <laughs> it's it. it I mean, it's fine. It, it's a the very reason very I'm excited taste. for this collection is a localization of the third game. Exactly. Like, right. Otherwise, it's just the collection. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that is the selling point for such a localization. So I agree. I just wanted to throw that possibility out there. But I do think that if, if Collection of Mana is this and it's happening, I think we are actually going to finally get a proper localization of Saken Three. So mm -hmm. here's hoping. Yeah. All right. I kept quiet about this earlier because we're in a spoiler discussion about a rumor. But now this is not a rumor. This is just a simple speculation about Smash. I think we're not just going to have one DLC fighter. I think we're going to have two. And the reason mm. I say this is because they don't have much more time left. <laughs> they, <laughs> they've got until, was it March 2020 to have all these characters out? February I think they're 2020. Gonna... February, yeah. All right. God, yeah. yeah. So I think they're going to release a character immediately and also tease another one. And, um... The simple answer to go with is Erdrick, because he's, he's kind of... That's what everyone kind of thinks. But I think they're actually going to have a Gen 8 Pokemon as DLC. I don't Ooh. know. I think it's going to be a mm. brand new Pokemon, too. One we haven't seen before. And this is both the Smash debut and the reveal of that Pokemon. Hmm. hmm. My, I, I do agree. I actually had this down. I, I didn't know how to work it back in, because I didn't want to, like, you know, go back into spoiler territory for Smash. But I do agree that they might also tease the third character. I don't I think we'll they'll, they'll announce and and release a second character and possibly tease the third character, but I don't I don't see it being a Pokémon. I, I think, you know, Incineroar being the very last newcomer added to the base roster, it's too soon. I and plus we we know what Nintendo has said about, you know, future DLC characters having a similar context and impact as Joker, like total WTF characters like, "Whoa, what? How?" And a Pokémon character wouldn't really fit that bill in my opinion. So I'm going to say I agree with you, John, but I, about the tease, but I do not think it's going to be a Pokemon. Gen 8 See, or otherwise. I think Pokemon hype is just huge at the moment, though. And uh, if it's both the reveal and the debut of, of this Pokemon that's never been seen before, right, I think right. that's going to be big for Smash. That's that's a good point. It could be, but that's also a bit risky. I mean, they had, they, they kind of took that risk with Greninja, and it just so happened that he was the most popular one. <laughs> right. But right. I, uh, I don't see them going for that, honestly. I will um, say that if they do tease DLC character number three, I actually don't think it'll be Erdrick, because I feel like it makes more sense for them to position Erdrick as DLC number four because of Dragon Quest XI S coming later this year. 
Yeah. Well, here's my thing. I don't think it's Erdrick at all. I think we've just put ourselves in the mindset that it must be Erdrick. I think it's going to be the Dragon Quest XI protagonist. All right. That would also work. Yep. I mean, Echo kind cool. of Echo fills cool. the same role as Erdrick, a Dragon Quest hero. Right. There he is. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I could see a tease. I, I'm not feeling a Pokemon. I don't know. It just, um, especially with Nintendo deciding the roster, I, for whatever reason, I feel like it's, it makes it less likely for it to be a Pokemon than it would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I do, I do think it's possible for there to be a tease of a second character, because as you mentioned, they are kind of running out of time here. <laughs> and if the rumored character is being shadow dropped during E3 or shortly thereafter, uh, there aren't a whole lot of opportunities for them to, like, you know, big events to, like, Tease the next one. I mean, they can make their own, of course. But I do think it makes sense to use E3 as that platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Who's the character, though, Andre? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my prediction is going to be someone I'm not too familiar with. So, uh, I'm happy if the rumored character gets in. <laughs> uh, and beyond that, I don't really care. So, I mean, I would love for it to be Gino, obviously. Um, but my prediction is that it's going to be a character from, like, some JRPG or some, <laughs> some game that I'm just not too interested in. Leon S. Kennedy. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Just to feed my own, nurse my own dreams, I'm going to say that it is not Sora, but I really want it to be. <laughs> Just to, I just had to get his name in there just to nurse my own dreams of Sora ever being in Smash. I don't think it's going to happen. It's but, not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Derek. Thanks for just to, it's, it's just to stomp on my, my dead Kingdom Hearts loving corpse. It's not going to happen. Thank That's you. That's what I'm here. Mother 3 has a higher chance of releasing. <laughs> 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 All right. Any, anything else, guys? Any final rumors? Or not rumors, predictions? All right. So this isn't really... I'm not going to predict any, any specific game, but I'm just going to say that Microsoft and Nintendo, I think, are going to have a very strong relationship, and I think it's going to be more than just little announcements. I think they're going to port some of their biggest games to Switch. Anything specific? Like Halo? Uh, yes, <laughs> Halo, Halo specifically. Halo the Master Chief Collection. Yeah. I think they're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, and Reach, and ODST on the Switch. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Jesus. That would be the thing amazing. Is, the thing is, you're predicting it, so it actually makes me feel as though there's a possibility because you, <laughs> you have a really strong track record. So. John just summons it to be true. I swear to God, if Time Patrol Star Fox actually is a thing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> They're going to open with it. <laughs> and close because of time travel. <laughs> people, oh, will, people will think you have inside information all the time anyway. They're really going to think that if you get that prediction right. <laughs> yeah. And I'll that, also say, um, on the Microsoft front, I think Ori in the Blind Forest and Will of the Wisps, I think they're a lot too, yeah. especially after Cuphead. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually think there's a good chance that Will of the Wisps will actually be a, a shown or announced here at E3. Um, John, do you? what do you think about Xbox Game Pass coming to Switch? Do you think that might be an announcement? I think xCloud has to come too, because if you're just having Game Pass and only have like five or four <laughs> Microsoft games on the Switch, then what's the point? But right. if xCloud comes, then totally. Mm -hmm. And if it does, then xCloud could be big. Like, I, th I think xCloud has a much higher chance of being big than Stadia does, if it comes to Switch. Because right. they have they have a library. They have games of their own. Uh, it may not be a ton, mm. but they do have their own IP. Um, and they already have a foothold in the console market, too. So I agree. xCloud is probably going to be uh, Google's biggest competitor here. Right. Yeah. Agreed. And not, not to get too off-topic, off, off topic though, as well, um, is xCloud with Game Pass. You have, subs you have a subscription, whereas with Stadia... You, have to, you still have to buy new games, which kind of goes against the whole point of the service. On top of their subscription. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Nothing about Stadia. Yes, looks Team XCloud. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> All right, guys. So, we're about, we're about out of time here. How are you feeling now? After we've gone through our predictions, after we've talked it over, how are you feeling now versus when we started? Are you more hyped than you were before? What? How are you feeling going into E3? I'm more hyped than I was, even be at the start of this discussion. I'm actually a little more hyped talking to you guys about what we expect maybe it could happen i'm feeling pretty good like i'd say like my hype isn't over the moon like it was last year because of smash obviously but it's up there especially considering the rumored character that we talked about and i'd say I, my hype is pretty healthy I'd like maybe like an a minus b plus i have a new prediction ash is going to be disappointed <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> I, I mean we're dreaming pretty big here i th I'm, I'm thinking a pr i'm feeling this is going to be a relatively standard E3. We might get some of the ideas that we put out there actually true, but there's no way all of them are going to happen, so I'm I'm at a pretty firm B. Hmm. Like, I think it's going to be good. I don't think it's going to be like, holy crap, that was the best, you know, presentation they've had to date. Oh, there's so many great games coming. It's like, no, we know right. about their g games that are coming, so it's hard to be as excited. It was just like, okay, we're going to get to play this one here, this one here. Hey, cool, look at this new information, that kind of thing. Rather than huge new game that we did not see coming. 
Well, I right. mean, we they, we know about the big games they want us to know about right now. You know, that doesn't mean that there's not. It, yeah. I'm excited for those games, though, is the thing. Is I'm mm-hmm. excited for Animal Same Crossing, I'm excited for Pokemon, Link's mm-hmm. Awakening. So even if they do just iterate on what we already know, I think it's still going to be a good show. Yeah. But I do hope there are some big surprises. And after talking about all these, I'm, I'm quite hopeful that, that there will be. Yeah, I think there will be at least one big surprise. I, I do. I think there will be at least one big surprise, too. But a lot of it will be filling in stuff about existing titles. But even in those cases, we know very little. We just mentioned three we've barely seen anything of, uh, despite our half-an-hour analysis. <laughs> and, um, Animal Crossing as well. We saw what we saw what could generously be called a cutscene, and that's it. Um, also, did we mention Fire Emblem at all? Oh, no, we didn't. We didn't? But we also we sure know didn't. that's coming out, so... I mean, yeah, we might show a little true. bit more of that, but... The thing is, I don't feel like Fire Emblem is that known of an entity. I feel like, unless you're following that game, then I don't think you know much yeah. about it. It's only been Japanese coverage, really, from, like, Fimitsu, I think. Mostly. Yeah. Like, I do think it'll get its own little segment in the direct, like, hey, it, remember, it's still coming, Three Houses, like, July, like, it, hey, it's on its way very here very soon, but I don't really expect anything beyond that. Yeah. Smash character. <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine? God. Oh my god, probably. <laughs> the, the, final, the final three, uh, uh, yeah, final three Smash characters would be all freaking Fire Emblem. It'll be, the, it'll be the one three for houses. House. Yeah, 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 one for each house. house. Yeah. 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 Oh god. Alright, <laughs> I think it's a good place to wrap it up. I'm, only, I'm just depressed now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, no, seriously, I'm pretty, I'm excited for E3. I'm probably at a B with Derek, I think. You know, I'm, 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 I'm optimistic, but I'm not getting overhyped for what's happening here. But I do think there will be some surprises. I am excited to see how they fill in the details, but what we don't know. Um, but with that, let us know what you think in the uh, comments below. Let us know what, what you're predicting, what you think of our own predictions. Uh, we'd be curious to hear them. And of course, make sure to stay tuned to GameSplain for tons more coming from E3. Like, literally tons. There's going to be probably 100 videos from E3 at least. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a very busy time. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. Bye.